In the north of Italy, in Lombardy, is the town of Grazi di Curtatone. It is a small medieval town of a thousand people, and it is the home of the oldest pavement art competition in the world. Incontro Nazionale dei Madinari is held every year on the 15th of August as part of Grazi's festival celebrating the Assumption of Mary. Hundreds of artists from around the world descend on the piazza of the Santuario della Grazia, and the small town swells with over 150,000 visitors. The artworks must be of a religious subject, and they must be completed in 24 hours. In 2012, pavement artists Jenny McCracken and Anton Pulverenti were the first Australians to compete at Grazia in the competition's 40-year history. My name's Jenny McCracken. I'm here in Melbourne on Burke Street. It's the first time I've been here for a while. Brought out a canvas that I did for a competition and just sussing out how the busking is. There's been a pretty steady flow of people stopping to have a chat and stopping to have a look and most importantly stopping to chuck some money in the buckets because <laughs> that's the, uh, the oil that greases the cogs of, of creativity when <laughs> you're out on the street. I love the freedom of being out on the street busking. I can do whatever I want. I can get immediate feedback from an audience and see when an image or when a design is successful or not. And it's not always what you would expect. First time seeing personally. Very nice. No, I just like the depth, depth that it's got to cut in there. It's really good. It certainly catches the eye. Obviously you want to draw something that means something to people, something that's conveying some kind of emotional connection. If there's some kind of big issue that's around, I'll often address that. Sometimes if you just capture the, the zeitgeist, it's, it, it's magic goes off. Oh my God, it just makes you want to go and look at it, you know? It makes you want to walk up to it. And they like to see change. I find the, the best feedback and the best earning times when you're busking is actually when you're doing some kind of complete piece and really bringing it to life. If people can watch that happen, then that's when you get the best response from them. I think the best one I saw was a, a 3D done of, of Lego figures. And it was fantastic. It was just line drawings and it looked like you were looking for a maze of one. That really was fabulous. But this is beautiful too. A lot of people come along and stand on the wrong side of the picture and say, oh, have you seen those 3D pictures? <laughs> you say, well, if you just go around and stand on the X, thank you, then you'll see that this is actually a 3D picture. <laughs> Jenny is Australia's reigning champion pavement artist. She won the title in 2010 and 2011 at Chalk Urban Art Festival, Australia's international pavement art competition. Her winning artworks focused on mental health and the environment, issues close to Jenny's heart. Jenny has won competitions around the world, but Grazi will be her biggest challenge. If she succeeds, Jenny will join the ranks of pavement artists known as the Madinari. The term Madinari reaches back to the early Middle Ages in Italy. Its literal meaning is painters of the Madonna and describes artists who would create devotional images of the Virgin Mary and the Catholic saints. The Madinaro tradition has always been defined by the relationship between the artist and the public and the exchange of coins for viewing the performance on the street. Today, in honor of this tradition, the champion of the Piazza at Grazia is bestowed the title of Maestro Madinaro.
It was 1989 before I met my first pavement artist. A friend of mine introduced me to Fadi Narkel, and he was quite a well-known artist around Sydney who'd been doing pavement art for quite some time. And he was so generous. He spent two days with me, just let me draw beside him. And I learnt so much. I'd been working for two years already doing menu boards for cafes and restaurants and stuff. Um, but this was totally different. This was something where I could just go out in the big wide world, do whatever I wanted um, and interact directly with an audience. So, and that was, that was really stimulating. It really, it, it, I was getting right off on that. That was awesome. The very first competition I participated in was the Gelden Street Painting Competition in Germany. The year that I was there was the year that there was the big changeover in uh, Russian politics. So Boris Yeltsin was just kind of rising to power and the competition was literally two weeks after Gorbachev disappeared. They didn't know whether he'd been kidnapped or what was going on. And so our subject for the picture was Gorbachev kind of looking wrecked and a bit stressed out in front of a huge big poster of Boris Yeltsin. There was heaps of fun. It's like art meets sport. You've got to have stamina, you've got to have physical skill, you've got to have creative focus, and you've got a really limited time. And it blew people away. Nobody had ever done anything quite so contemporary, quite so kind of timely. And that was the first competition I've ever, ever, ever won in my life. That was such a buzz. I reckon I was buzzing for about six months after that. <laughs> On her return to Melbourne, Jenny became a founding member of Chalk Circle. Australia's first organised group of pavement artists, which ran an international pavement art competition called Streetworks from 1993 to 1996. Australia's current international pavement art festival was founded in 2005. My mother introduced me to a lot of different artists, um, yeah, a lot of sculptors and painters, so it was always part of my life. But I first saw, experienced pavement art on the streets of Belgium and that was in 1990. I was there on holiday and I saw these artists working and I was just mesmerised. I went back in the mid-90s and by that stage I knew quite a few pavement artists in Sydney and I just appreciated the art form even more. Andy founded and organised Chalk the Walk in 2005. The festival, held on Piermont Bridge in Sydney, attracted 28 competing artists and drew an audience of 60,000 people. It grew to become Chalk Urban Art Festival. And since 2005, 10 festivals have been held in Sydney, Parramatta, Melbourne and Surface Paradise. Starting the festival was a great opportunity to take art to the people, so it fulfilled my passion and my need to be able to give something back from what I was doing. You know, one lady in particular came to thank us for the festival and say she used to live on the streets, but art was really what helped her get back on her feet again. So each year she brings her whole family to the festival. I think what I really love most about chalk is from such a simple tool, it is such a powerful medium to take your message out to the people. Chalk Urban Art Festival is part of a growing and global pavement art movement. There are dozens of festivals taking place all around the world. Grazi started 40 years ago, it was the first festival. After that was Gelden. But now there's festivals that are taking place all throughout North America, expanding into South America as well. Mexico has become a prominent place. Thousands of people are going to see hundreds of artists at work. And there's really become a circuit. Artists are traveling from one festival to another. And we know this now because of social media. The internet and social media have facilitated an explosion of global interest in pavement art. And the form that is synonymous with the modern pavement art movement is 3D street painting. Kurt Wenner is widely acknowledged as the father of modern pavement art and the inventor of 3D street painting. A brilliant artist formerly with NASA, Kurt travelled to Italy in the early 80s and began making a living by creating chalk drawings on the street. He participated at Grazi for many years, winning the title of Maestro in 1984, attracting new interest in the festival. When it combined traditional pavement art techniques with classical training, illusion and performance art to invent 3D street painting, 
His unique geometry was inspired by the great Roman Baroque ceilings of the 17th century. The great European masters would give the illusion of soaring architecture and floating figures and ceiling frescoes through the use of anamorphism. Artworks travel throughout the world via email and social media portals like Facebook. While the artist's names may not be widely known, the 3D illusions they create have been seen by millions. The internet has not only increased the popularity of the art form, it has extended the life of the artworks, so they live on long after they are washed away. In Grazia, it's a 24-hour competition and artists must produce an artwork that's based on a religious theme. In Australia, religion can be quite a contentious issue, so we tend to avoid that at Chalk Urban Art Festival. I'm pretty passionate about the whole idea of reinstilling in people a respect for the environment and for animals, and St Francis of Assisi is kind of the perfect segue for that because he's Catholic and he's well known and there's a lot of really beautiful imagery associated with his story. The quote is, if you have men who will exclude any of God's creatures from the shelter of compassion and pity, you will have men who will deal likewise with their fellow men. And yet that's the whole struggle is to make such a kind of heavy thing <laughs> into an inspiring and happy and, and kind of uplifting piece of artwork. I was kind of attached to the idea of a child reading the story of, of St Francis as a pop-up book, but I'm a bit worried about the surface being too rough and not being able to get the kind of detail required to make the pop-up book look good. Every single competition that I've ever entered, I haven't known what I was going to draw until the night before. <laughs> But I feel like in this instance I have to be a little bit more prepared than that. I do have to actually have practiced my picture and have some much clearer idea of how long it's going to take me. And you can see from looking at past winners that there's a definite preference the judges have for certain images. I mean, the number of Madonna and Childs that have won is quite significant. <laughs> I'm not sure that the perspective thing is something that many artists at Mantua actually employ. I think they tend to stick to a 2D flat presentation that's just laid on the ground. And so what I'm trying to do is create the 3D illusion. I hadn't ever heard of 3D pavement art. I, I mean, as far as I was concerned, I was the first. <laughs> it was only afterwards I found out that there were people who were doing a much better job and had been doing it for much longer than I had been. <laughs> There's not enough words I can ever use to encourage young people to go out on the street and try to get over their fears and to work in front of the public because uh, artists have so many fears about what the public's going to think about them. And it's so cathartic to sit in front of the public and find out that they don't have any of the ideas or the preconceptions or the judgments that you, you assign to them. The nature of pavement art, which is the relationship between the artist and the public, is unique and you don't get much closer to the real world than when you're in the real world on the street. Going to Grazi is interesting for me because I'm not Catholic, so finding a religious subject with a message that appeals to me has been quite a process. It's a mistake to look at this imagery and say, oh, the Catholic Church, because a lot of the imagery was not invented by the Catholic Church, actually, it was invented by the people. Mm. In the Italian popular tradition, it's a, a reassertion of the mother goddess, of a very ancient goddess. You can actually see Madonnas in some of the southern Italian churches. They are classical statues of Venus that are robed. The, uh, people complain sometimes about the religious aspect, the iconography of the festival, but it, it's really rooted in, in, the, uh, in the public and what the public um, relates to. So I, I support that and I had the personal experience of really seeing these images and the way that the people are related to them. That was quite, quite a wonderful experience. Mm. Spiritual, regardless of what the person's belief was. I was going to do St Francis of Assisi, but I just couldn't come up with a design that I was really happy with. So I've changed my mind and I'm going to do the Assumption of Mary in 3D. My idea was, based on the fact that I hadn't seen it represented anywhere else in the records of the festival, to bring Mary up out of the ground with her, you know, 
angels mm -hmm. and cupids and, and wondering how effective you thought that might be as a picture or successful, more to the point. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think it would be successful if you want the judges to deal with it. You, won't, you will not want to distort their figure. They're very conservative mm. still. And the traditional view of Mary has always been from below, so hopefully this will be something they haven't seen before. You know, one of the fun about this particular kind of perspective is that you get to retell all the stories from a different viewpoint. That's what's so neat about it. It forces you into doing original compositions just by the very fact that it's a different way, a different angle to look at the subject. So, Kurt, have you got any specific tips for me? Well, I can safely say that having lived in the town of Grazia and near it for 18 years and having traveled the entire world, the festival of Grazia is the most challenging surface and circumstance of any pigment art I've ever done in my life. The asphalt's very rough. So if you design to it, you want to have big flashy forms and not a lot of tiny detail. Mm. It's an extremely porous surface and it's hard to build up color there. Okay, we get asked this all the time as pavement artists, but I have to ask you, Kurt, what happens in Grazia when it rains? Well, historically it's rained quite often, I think one time in four. So um, it is a big deal and when you get a rainstorm, it's not light little South Pacific Northwest rain, it's huge, dramatic, lightning-filled rainstorm and that water just comes down in buckets. Now, uh, some people try to cover their works with plastic, but Bernard von Hesburgh actually had a great solution one year. He used a wool blanket. The blanket kept the water from really hitting the painting, it absorbed it, and then allowed it to leach out. Thanks, Kurt. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, I certainly want to encourage you to give it your best at Grazia. Don't over plan and, uh, you know, be prepared to uh, suffer. But um, it's, a, it's an unusual and unique experience, I think. It's a definitely, and, and I think nobody who goes there and experiences is that is ever disappointed. The Assumption of Mary seemed to me to be something that really linked in with the whole idea of the 3D pavement art, something coming up out of the, out of the ground and elevating itself to heaven. Sure, the audience is looking down, but I want them to have the sense that she's way up there as well, and that we are almost in the privileged position of floating above her, but she's passing through our space. For any competition, you never want to have a picture that looks half finished. You always want to have it at a stage where it can be finished like that if necessary. But also, I want to design it so that I can get as much in as possible. The thing about Kurt's paintings that I aspire to is to include that level of detail, that level of just richness. So what you can see behind me here is um, a basic architectural structure, which is a framework that I'm gonna use. I've drawn out a grid that's the size of the, the area that you get given at Grazi. One of the things that I actually want to do if I've got time is to actually build this structure in miniature so I can twist it around and get some ideas of where shadows will go and how light would interact with this structure. The real thing always gives you more nuance and more detail than you get from, from just making it up. That's why it was great having the models come in and do some Virgin Mary poses for me. It gives me a sense of how I can place a figure in the space and how to place her so that there is the minimal amount of distortion. So yeah, this is where I'm at. It's changed considerably. It's only three weeks out until we go and I still haven't really got anything solid, but I'm feeling a lot more confident and I know I have a vision in my head that I feel like if I put that down, that's gonna be something that will, even if it doesn't win the competition, it will knock people's socks off. It will be an inspiring and beautiful thing to look at. My name's Anton Forverenti. Chalk drawings are a major part of my repertoire these days, and that's developed over a number of years, but I will always come back to drawing on a desk. Many things challenge me about drawing. There's the technical side that I find very challenging, intellectually stimulating. Um, and then there's also the emotional aspects of drawing. You feel like you're working through things or you're working through emotions sometimes. You might not be able to put it into words, which is why we would draw. So, yeah, I basically draw because I have to. And I've always felt that compulsion to draw right from an early age. You know, I like structure. So I'm going to pull out a ruler and sort of work it all out in perspective. But at the same time, that's not the total 
thing. I like to let a work develop in its own way. Um, but in the way I work, I can't do without that structure. So it's a, it's a balance between the artistic side and the technical side. I do use a camera sometimes to check distances and things like that, but I like to have that unknown element, that sort of wild card. You don't quite know how it's going to turn out, and that's what makes it exciting. Anton Pulverenti's background is in painting and in drawing. He's not a traditional chalk artist. He studied fine arts, and he first came to take part in Chalk Urban Art Festival in 2006, and that was his first time at picking up chalk. I had heard about pavement art just in magazines and things like that. I'd, I think I f saw one of Kurt's drawings in the late 90s, and it was Dies Irae, where the figures are coming up out of hell, and it was quite impressive. But I didn't think about it again until I saw the website for Chalk Urban Art and went, wow, this will, this will be fun. I love drawing, so this will be another way to get it all out. That first time on the pavement was confronting in an emotional sense because I'd never worked in public before like that. Having large numbers of people looking over my shoulder constantly was uh, very different to having a crowd looking at your work in, say, an exhibition gallery. And in 2007, he became champion pavement artist. I chose to have my daughter as the subject matter and I showed her from a number of different ages as an angel flying up out of a decorative order in the ground. I guess there it was emotional because it was my daughter and she was quite young at that stage and it was very special from that point of view. When you feel that sort of strong connection to the subject matter, the work is naturally successful. You, you feel strongly about the subject matter, therefore the audience will see that, you will translate that. And if you don't feel anything for the subject matter, the audience isn't going to feel that. The breast drawings are when <laughs> It's difficult, you know, you think, how am I going to finish this? This is a disaster. And you come through from the brink of disaster and you're victorious. <laughs> and that's, you're really on a high cloud there. <laughs> but it's only because of the disaster that you feel so good. Going to Italy and taking part in the Madonari Festival in Grazi meant a number of things to me. I thought it was exciting because I'd be in an international context now. I would be with the best chalk painters currently in the world. It would make clearer to me how I am in the world at the moment as a contemporary artist. Grazia is the ultimate testing ground for all pavement artists. But for Anton, the journey to Grazia was also a very personal pilgrimage. Well, I have some Italian heritage on my father's side. My grandfather left Italy for economic reasons. He heard that you could get land in Australia if you emigrated there and farmed the land. The government would give you land if you, if you farmed it in North Queensland. So that's what he did, and he arrived here in 1923. Driving towards Grazi, you had a lot of farming areas that really looked uncannily like North Queensland, where my grandparents settled. And I was really struck at the similarity between the northern Queensland sugarcane fields and the wheat fields in northern Italy around the area of Grazi. This village is a scene like a very happy village, where there is a, a nature, where there is uh, good food, where there is uh, important, beautiful art, and uh, first of all, where there is uh, Our Lady. Santuario della Grazia was built in the late 14th century as a votive offering to the Virgin Mary, soon after the bubonic plague had swept through Europe. For the people of Grazia and Mantua, the site has always been a place to pray, seek comfort, and give thanks to the Blessed Virgin perché il santuario e tutto il complesso è nato appunto una, con una dedicazione di cui c'è una lapide splendida qui a seguito di una peste da cui si veniva fuori e la lapide dice che moriva tutto fuori e non c'era modo di difendersi e ha questa espressione, questa lapide in latino ma traduco meglio che posso che è in latino molto bello si versavano lacrime inutili che non commuovevano più neppure il Padre Eterno, neppure Dio. No? Per l'altro verso, ecco che i Gonzaga di allora hanno dato uno scossone appena passato questo travaglio durissimo 
e hanno pensato di edificare a memoria per una fiducia questo santuario. It was pretty strange going into that cathedral in Grazi and seeing a crocodile hang from the roof. It really quite odd, quite surreal in fact, and being told it's a symbol of evil, but not to worry because it's just a symbol. And it made me think about a photograph that I have of my great-grandfather holding a crocodile and proudly showing it off. So that was interesting. We have these trans sort of continental connections between Grazi and my Italian ancestry here in Australia. Grazi like a lot of small Italian villages, is defined by tradition and religion. The Grazia Pavement Art Festival is very much a product of its environment. Grazia is really important because it's the original festival. It actually started because they wanted to record this dying art form. There was only a handful of the traditional Madonnaro still working, so they were all brought together in the piazza to record it before it disappeared. Grazia's Madinari Museum has recorded the festival's 40 years of history and preserved the Madinari tradition. Original artworks by the maestros who have influenced the art form adorn the walls and helped attract the development of pavement art through the centuries. From the modern 3D illusions of Kurt Wenner to the stone drawing styles of the early Madinari. Cesare Spezia is the museum's curator Nel festival uh, sono coinvolto già dal primo anno, quando abbiamo incominciato, quindi 40 anni fa. Però noi eravamo già coinvolti nella che organizzavano mostre di pittura sacra. Quindi il festival di questo tipo, con soggetti religiosi, si inserisce già in, una, in un contesto preparato prima. Quindi prende forza perché già c'era esperienza sul soggetto sacro. By going to Italy I could see the cultural context that chalk art was made in and seeing the old Madonaris conveyed a sense of tradition to me which I haven't forgotten since. Mariano Bottoli has been competing at Grazi almost every year since 1978. Mariano's roots are entwined with the ancient traditions of the Madonari and in keeping with them he is using a combination of chalk and stones to create his piece. Allora, io sono nato sul lago di Garda e negli anni in cui ero bambino c'era il più vecchio madonnaro di tutti che utilizzava quei sassi che sono argille, gesso, del carbone che si può trovare sulle spiagge per fare i suoi disegni, una persona povera che non poteva comprare gessi o colori. E ricordandomi di questo Ugo, un vecchissimo madonnaro, io che sono lì del lago di Garda ho utilizzato la stessa spiaggia dove lui prendeva i colori per fare un disegno alla maniera degli antichi madonnari. Stones were the tools of the trade for the early Madonari. When the chalk pastel was introduced in the 16th century, the Madonari only had access to a limited color palette. Senza colore praticamente. Quei pochissimi colori che avevano li potevano utilizzare per differenziare la Madonna Se avevano del blu era la Madonna gloriosa, se avevano del rosso era la Madonna um, penitente, se avevano del nero era la Madonna um, addolorata, eh, se era bianco era l'incoronata. Eh, era la stessa storia per cui una grande faccia con la barba era Gesù Cristo, senza barba era la Madonna, ma sempre grandi begli occhi. The festival's rules are all about tradition. Chalk is the only medium that can be used on the pavement. And fixatives and binders that have become popular on modern streets are not allowed. But it is the religious aspect of the festival that is Grazia's most famous trademark. The festival is held on the Feast of the Assumption, and that's the most prominent day of the Catholic calendar in Grazia. This tiny little town that lies dormant throughout the year just is just it's just a flux of thousands of people coming there to go to church and to see the artists, to see all these artworks. But what I find really interesting is that we've got Buddhists working next to atheists, working next to non-practicing Catholics, working next to very religious people. It's about the art. The fact that I'm not really religious myself was irrelevant. I can still make a religious piece of art and be very emotionally connected to it. My grandparents were both Catholics and um, uh, I was used to having the Christian iconography around as a child, um, especially at my grandmother's place. 
before she died, she gave me a number of religious prints of hers that she had when she was in boarding school. So I've done a few works of those beforehand. So I've actually done Madonna and Childs before in Australia. And so coming here, I thought I had to do it again in Italy where it's special. Five minutes away from Grazia, in Mantua, a pavement artist sets up his workspace. Bernardo, or the Baron, as he is affectionately called, is one of the legends of the pavement art world. He began his career as a 17-year-old apprentice to Kurt Wenner, and, like his mentor, has lived in Grazia for many years. Kurt, I already met when I first came here in 86, where I did my sixth street painting in my life and Kurt already was a great master of the piazza back then. Over the years I've worked with him in many projects, even in Japan and America, and hope to work with him some more in the future. Bernardo von Hesburgh is one of the few pavement artists of today who lives his life as a traditional madnago. When I'm not in Sydney or competing on different festivals, I travel to towns in northern Italy mainly and work there for a few days on my canvases in the pedestrian street and that's how I make most of my living. I make as well a lot of commission work in between, but yeah, a lot with my big canvases that are even too big to open in my own house. I really like the old Italian traditional Renaissance style and hopefully even in future when I do my original works on Sydney's festival where original pictures are being painted, I hope to do original Renaissance style, Italian Renaissance style. Bernd was the one that actually, he challenged me to start the festival. He, um, I remember that day really well. He came into my office and I was feeling a little bit like, where's my life going? I'd been doing a lot of corporate events. And, um, you know, Bernd, he said, well, look, you've been, you love this art form, you know all these artists, why don't you start a festival like they're doing overseas? There's nothing like this in Australia. And, um, you know, look after the artist. And if you do that, I'll come out and um, be your first international artist. Bernardo is a regular at the Karazzi Festival. And this year we'll be taking Jenny under his wing. <laughs> to Gracie because we want to celebrate this activity, this urban cultural activity. We think this is very important because it's the way that the artists can be just close to the people and share art with the people. It's very important for the artists to have this um, uh, kind of experience and Gracie is the ancient festival. As the artists arrive, the registration process begins. The competition is divided into three levels. The elite maestro level, Madonnaro qualificato, and Madonnaro simplici. To become a maestro, an artist must win the qualificato section, which is the major prize awarded at the competition. Jenny and Anton will compete in the simplici section. This is the mandatory level assigned to all artists competing at Grazi for the first time and contains a mix of talent from true novices of the art form to seasoned veterans like Jenny. The winner of the Simplici division is promoted to Madonnaro Qualificato the following year. Bernd's been just invaluable. He took me out and showed me the, the site where all the pictures are produced. Um, we had a good look and he gave me a few tips. One of them was um, cleaning your site because there's a build-up of dust and fine stuff, which is not so bad, but it does stop the chalk from really going in and being able to build up layers. So you clean not only your space, but the spaces around you because they will come and clean when you're not there and they'll sweep their stuff, if there's any stuff, onto your picture. So if you clean theirs, then there's less stuff to go onto yours. <laughs> the surface isn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The surface is so much better, that's awesome. It's gonna be, there's, there's room for detail, there's room for, um, like it's not gonna chew up three times as much chalk as I expected, so that's good. What's the light like? Oh, the light, yeah, that's another issue because we have a lot of 
uh, lights. Mm. And so every person that walks around on that piazza, mm. and there's a lot of spectators all night long. Yeah. Uh, every person throws at least five or six shadows. Yeah, right. So, you're, so it's while you're working, changing. there's a constant change of shadow and light. Yeah. So it's not easy. There were a lot of eyes on us being the first Australians to come out to Grazi. The papers, they declared, 146 artists and one Australian. There were actually two Australians. It was really nice to have messages from home. We were checking in on social media and it was like hero messages. How beautiful, have been a fan since watching Mary Poppins jump into a chalk picture as a kid. Good yeah. luck, Jenny. I know it gave a real boost to Jenny. She was feeling quite nervous about everything. I'm feeling fairly prepared, except in my picture. Yeah. <laughs> I'm prepared in every other way. It is the eve of the competition. Jenny has yet to finish preparing her design. Doing an original piece of Grazia places extra pressure on the artist. A lot of the other artists in this competition are just doing reproductions or adaptations of reproductions. So I have to get my design, my original design, up to a level where in that tight amount of time, all I'm doing is focusing on the technique of reproducing my artwork to the highest possible quality. That puts me on a level playing field with everybody else. If I'm working out my own design on the day, I'm just not gonna get it finished. It is five o'clock in the piazza and the competition has begun. This is a marathon, and the artists take their time marking out their plots, preparing their tools and chat among themselves as the crowd slowly builds. Well, I was pretty nervous. It's always hard to start a new picture, and it's harder when you're in a totally new situation. There's just a little bit of pressure. <laughs> And I was, yeah, I just, my mind was all over the place. I found it really hard to focus. That was a hard couple of hours to push through. But once I got it going and once I was kind of in the flow of it, then it got much, much easier. I find the first stages of a drawing quite painful because there's nothing to look at and there's nothing for the audience to look at. So. I just can't wait for it to be over and actually start getting the colours in and laying the colours in and it's not until all the colours are laid in that I begin to relax and move into the piece slowly. It's sort of a bit of a rat race up until that point of just getting it down, just to get over that initial hurdle of blank pavement. Noi è una prassi abbastanza consolidata oramai che i nostri madonnari si spostano praticamente in tutto il mondo. Perciò per noi è stata una bellissima sorpresa avere qui la presenza di persone che arrivano dall'Australia. Abbiamo visto che il loro è un, un ottimo livello e piacerebbe anche a noi che i nostri andassero a confrontarsi sul posto. A maggior ragione perché l'Australia, essendo la prima volta che viene, ha portato un messaggio a nostro parere piuttosto forte. Significa che anche loro vedono in grazia un momento di riferimento, quindi anche noi desideriamo poter consolidare questa situazione. Two hours later, the artists pack their tools and clear the piazza for the competition's official opening ceremony, when Monsignor Caparello will bless the chalk. But as part of the 40th anniversary celebrations, something different is scheduled before the blessing. Bravissimo Davide! Bravo! Evviva! Oh, ce l'ha fatta! Bello! Grande applauso di più, di più, di più! Innanzitutto grazie a voi per i volontisti che vi dico con grande affetto e con una certa cuore di vedere le vostre manovre che ho visto in altri momenti. Che madre Teresa mi pare, no? Dice io sono la matita di Dio e ciascuno di noi è matita e deve fare così. Per l'intercessione della Beata Vergine Maria ci benedica tutti, pensiamo alle nostre famiglie, pensiamo a quanti sono sofferenti. 
nel nome del Padre e del Figlio e dello Spirito Santo. Amen. At the start of the festival in Grazi, the bishop came and blessed the chalk and I found that very special. I thought, well, that's another emotional connection to the drawing. I wanted to get some of that energy. The special thing about it is that everybody else feels special about it. The blessing for me comes from all the artists feeling that it's a special event, so it's a special piece of chalk. The night time was awesome. It was, it was cool, you could concentrate, you could think. The light wasn't too distracting, I had a good headlight. And I was amazed that people were still coming around at 2.30, even three o'clock. Even some of the artists were taking time off to go around and just have a quick look while it was a bit peaceful and cool. Once I got into my flow, I just kept working. The next day, my arm was so sore because I did not stop for the whole time. Except for around three o'clock, I went and had a coffee with Bernd, and that was awesome. <laughs> Thank God for the coffee pot. <laughs> the energy level was just high the whole time. And it's amazing how once you get a group of people and they're all really focused, that, that energy really is noticeable. There was a very, very strong emotional sort of content with the piece that I made in Grazia. The design itself was derived from some of the religious icons my grandmother had and a jewelry box that my Italian grandfather made during the Second World War in a prison camp. For me, it's several things. Part of it is that uh, it's ephemeral. You create something in the here and now. People have to be here and witness it now and after a while it disappears. So you are really creating something um, and there's a dynamic with the public. That's what I really like. And I really like the simpleness uh, of it. I don't have a background in arts and it just, uh, yeah, you just need an idea and some chalk and a little piece of street you can start and uh, everybody can do that. The people is my biggest inspiration and my motivation are very different artists that I met in very different uh, festivals. Anyone who works in the streets is inspiration for me. I think it's a great thing to do. The first time that I'm here in Grazie to see what happened here, to look at the artists, to look how the great amazing pictures they are painting. Noi a volte ci stupiamo addirittura perché non ci aspettavamo una cosa così. Diciamo che per noi è come vedere un figlio quando cresce, no? Adesso sta arrivando all'età adulta, va sempre accompagnato, però eh, insomma hai le stesse apprensioni che hai verso un figlio e la stessa gioia quando vedi che le cose riescono bene. Really, around the world, it's people with a passion for art that are behind these projects that are wanting to showcase what these artists can do. I like the way that the festival's moving in Australia. So I'm looking forward to bring more artists over here to experience this event and then take them home and give them that freedom to be able to take, take it all forward. That's the really nice part. I'm starting to see things in the smoke behind her. I'm not going to play them up too much. Just have a nice simple design and keep making the colour more complex, I think, is the way to go. It is the morning of the 15th of August, the feast day of the Assumption of Mary. The artists have worked through the night and are in the final stages of completing their work. I found the 24-hour time frame very taxing physically and mentally too. By 8 o'clock in the morning, your brain is pretty tired. So 
you have to dig down deep into yourself to come up with the reserve of energy uh, to actually complete the picture. Yeah, pumped on coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the point where I need to be. That's the most important thing. Where I want to be is never where I am, but, you know, we're getting there. <laughs> well, the last few hours were the hardest competitively I've ever done. I'd had a lot to drink, but it was really hot. It was the hottest day they'd had in Grassy for 10 years, 35 degrees, which translates on the pavement to about 40 degrees. And I was cooking, I was feeling faint, I was feeling quite ill. By then I was having quite a bit of difficulty concentrating and it was only the adrenaline that was keeping me going. <laughs> By the time I got to the end of my designed work and it was about three o'clock in the afternoon, it was, yeah, 40 degrees on the pavement, I was, I was done. The bright colours that I put into the drawing in Grazia, again, that's a very personal and emotional thing for me. The strength of the Madonna's face, the way the child looks a little bit like my daughter did as a baby, all of those things contribute to, I think, what was a, a memorable piece. Bellissima serata, c'è tantissima gente su questo palco, non sono altissima, però riesco a vedere. When the awards ceremony began, I was actually really, really nervous, but also terribly excited. I knew we were in with a good chance, but the standard of work was so good, I felt we could miss out altogether. And it was all in Italian, so when they got to the Semplici section, we almost missed it. Nell'artista australiana, Jenny McCraggen, va il primo premio Madonnari Semplici che le permetterà il passaggio alla categoria superiore. I was numb. <laughs> I was kind of out of it. And I was really disconnected from it anyway. I was kind of in that frame of mind where, well, I really hoped for the best, but I thought Anton was going to win. <laughs> Jenny has won her division. Next time she goes to Grazia, she'll be eligible to compete for the title of maestro. It's really an honour to have got a prize and to have actually succeeded in what I came here to try and achieve, which is to get to the qualificato level. It just gets harder from here, but that's good. It's really good. The winner of the qualificato division and title, Maestro Madnago, is Mexican artist Wondrous Vera for his contemporary interpretation of Michelangelo's famous sculpture, La Pieta. Eh, bueno, eh, no saben cuánto, de veras cuánto trabajo este, me costó esto, todo lo que significa para mí. Y, y bueno, para, para nosotros, lo, lo, los de México, pues eh, después de 10 de años que inició esto, bueno, casi 10 años en, con el Festival Veladía en Monterrey, eh, llegar a, a, a aquí y competir y compartir nuestro arte, pues eh, es un gusto, es un honor. Y, y este premio se lo dedico a todos mis colegas, todos los que me ayudaron, la gente que, que me echó porras, los organizadores, toda la gente, toda la gente. Es para ustedes. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, to, nice to meet you. It was a pleasure to work yeah. with you next Likewise. to my place. And, and yeah. thank you, you people from Australia. And I hope to be maybe there next year. Yeah, yeah. that would be fantastic. Yeah. Make me work hard over there as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do it. Y es un festival maravilloso, muy peculiar, no solo por la tradición que tiene, que en esta ocasión fueron 40 años, sino también por estas condiciones de trabajo 
que también son un reto físico este, y mental, ¿no? Muy, muy fuerte. Just wanted to call it the, the, um, the Assumption of Grazi because it's the festival of the Assumption and that's definitely what my picture is all about and it's particular to Grazi, that's why I did 3D because this is a pavement art festival. 3D was really developed in pavement art here by Kurt Renner and so it's in honor of, of that effort of his and so it's unique to Grazi so it's obviously the assumption from Grazi. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, dreams come true stuff. <laughs> So I feel like we've come full circle. Vern has come out to Australia and shown us the traditions of the Italian Madonaro and now Jenny and Anton have been able to travel to Italy and show everyone what Australians can do. And we're definitely going to continue that now. They know that we're here. We were able to wave the flag and we'll show them what the rest of Australia can do. The overnight thing here, that's what I really hope we can do in Australia is have that. You don't, the overnight thing is really special and any time you get to share with other artists is a fabulous, fabulous thing because you've got that unique bond in common and, and so much to talk about and so much inspiration comes out of it. It's always really valuable and really inspiring and so I'm looking forward to that, to the next one. I'll get to take home um, at least a dozen different approaches that I wasn't aware of before. And see, the, and then that will enrich the art in Australia that's produced. See, I'll, I will take home a renewed interest in colour, right? And I wouldn't have got that but just by hanging around in Australia. It's getting more people to just get that appreciation for art as well. And you never know who you're going to see on the streets at the festivals. It could be the next Michelangelo. You just don't know. It's good to go back to those roots and go, yeah, yeah, this is... It's still where it came from. It's not necessarily where it has to be at all the time, but it's good to just remember that and celebrate that. Because there is something great about how temporary that kind of art is. It's like a flower, it's fragile, it's, it's yeah, it's unique. It's, it's something that you just treasure and enjoy for the moment and then it's gone. Yeah. This makes me green. Green in your own way now. Shine in your own way now. Well, I'll sing it to me. Shine in your own way. Smile. Oh, <laughs> 